And founder and director of Dedimos Potestetem, Amanda Sawyer, joins me from New York to discuss how COVID-19 has affected workers around the globe. Good to have you join us, Amanda. Thank you. It's good to be here. Now, help us understand um, the far-reaching impact of COVID-19 on, on workers across the world and employment. Um, well, I believe here in New York in particular, it's been particularly you know, hard. Uh, so small business owners like myself in particular are affected for obvious reasons because uh, of rent and because of um, uh, social distancing. And when you work in, in business development, um, it can be extremely difficult to make some of the choices that you have to make, uh, you know, regarding your employees and regarding your office space and so forth. And so what we all try to do in this situation, myself included, um, is prioritize our employees and our people uh, to make sure, you know, as a business owner, you have a responsibility first and foremost to your people, I believe. And so the, the um, difficult challenge for all business owners, but particularly small business owners in New York City, is prior prioritizing their people first and making sure that their people have hours, their people are taken care of because their people have families as well. So we have lost quite a few businesses um, in New York and that's very tragic for all of us because New York is a place where immigrants come and build businesses from the ground up and that's one of the most beautiful things about our city. But our city has remained strong overall and our public officials have uh, been doing their best to take care of us and so our city is reopening today and I firmly believe that our economy will start again and the loans that have been granted to business owners that have kept us alive will um, help us rebuild and will be stronger than ever. Right, so you mentioned um, small businesses and in countries like Nigeria and developing nations, um, small businesses will provide about 80% of the jobs and we see that some of these um, businesses, especially those in event planning and tourism, are the hardest hit. What can you tell us about that in the U.S.? Um, it's very similar, actually. So um, tourism, New York City lives on tourism very much like other cities around the world. And so uh, one of the things that our uh, public officials have been trying to do to us is assure small businesses loans so that they can uh, rebuild after the crisis. And once New York is open and New York is already sort of opening up, uh, tourism will flood back in and people will, luckily this city is very much, the people of the city are very much about support supporting small businesses, myself included. So uh, small businesses have kept each other alive and our clients, my, my own included, have been very loyal to us, have taken care of us in this crisis. And it's really been about uh, solidarity and standing with one another through this crisis and knowing that it too shall end as it is. Um, uh, God be uh, thanked for that. And uh, once New York is open, uh, everybody will come out and support our local restaurants and support our local businesses. And you know, in my neighborhood in particular, we've already been trying to do that as a community. So it's, uh, I think it really comes down to, like many other things in our nation at the moment, solidarity and standing with one another and building each other up and supporting one another. So the lockdown has put a lot of pressure on, on working parents, and, but we know that mothers are more likely um, to lose their jobs or quit as a result of the lockdown um, from the COVID-19 pandemic. How can mothers reposition at this time? So I've actually seen uh, not just, we don't just work with businesses and, and um, parents in New York City. We also work with businesses and parents around the world, um, including recently we, we spoke to parents in New Delhi and India. Um, and one of the things, the remarkable things that I've seen is that mothers in particular have really stepped to the forefront. And even if they had 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 to leave their jobs because they were laid off, they've actually started developing their own businesses from home. They've seen this as an opportunity to say, you know what, perhaps this doesn't work out, but perhaps God has afforded me this uh, this challenge uh, so that I can do what I really want to do. And so we've seen a lot of mothers in particular start side businesses. And uh, we've, you know, been there to give advice about building websites. We've seen young women who have been laid off uh, decide, you know what, this is the time where I decide I'm going to do what I want to do for the rest of my life and I'm going to build my own website and I'm going to start putting myself out there and I'm going to start teaching online and reaching out to people around the world and we found that with our clients um, people around the world have been very receptive and um, even throughout all you know the tragedy that's happened and, and there has been 
a lot of tragedy. Many people have lost loved ones. We've seen mothers in particular step up and say, you know what, we're not going to allow this to crush us. Instead, we're going to see this as an opportunity. We're going to have a growth mindset and we're going to uh, seize the day and and do what we want to do and, and put ourselves out there. And, and we've seen that uh, largely they've been successful. So that's really exciting. Absolutely. But we know mothers are more likely to feel guilty for not being there um, for their children. So where do organizations come in? Um, could you repeat that last part of the question, please? Uh, mothers are more likely to feel guilty for not being there for their children. So where do organizations come in? Ah, well, so what we found actually is we have found that parents, um, you know, they, they, they're feeling a little guilty about not being able to be there 100% with their children. But that's where organizations like mine come in. So we offer one of the parts of my business, one wing, is uh, educational programs. And so we've been offering academically stimulating educational programs that teach young children how to advocate for themselves. So we do, we have a lot of debate programs and we, not just for high school and middle school students, but also elementary school students, because we believe that inculcating these skills of advocacy in children at a young age and inculcating leadership skills like initiative, like conflict resolution into children at a young age, starting from five, um, has, is actually preparing them to advocate for themselves and for others. And so my organization has actually, thank goodness, really thrived in, in this pandemic because we've had a lot of parents that have come to us and said, you know, we need this three-hour block where our children are engaged and they're doing something, but we don't want them to, to do something silly. We want them to do something that complements the educational skills they're learning or complements the lessons they're learning. So we've developed tailored programs that reinforce the lessons that students are learning in school. So if they're learning about a certain thing in biology, we'll encourage debate topics where they can discuss biology. So all of the things that they're learning in class are reinforced by these extracurricular programs. All right, Amanda, I'm afraid we do have to leave it there. Many thanks for sharing your perspective with us.